Before we looked at how our program uses the stack for holding return addresses and controlling the flow between functions. We're now going to look at how it uses the stack for storing data in buffers and how these buffers can be overflowed to give an attacker control over what the program does. So we're going to use the debugger again and we're going to stop inside the say hello function. The say hello function has got one variable. It's a character buffer, which is 64 characters long, and it's called name. Down here in our locals window, we see the memory address of the buffer, which is 19FEEO. And because this is the only variable that our function uses, 19FEEO and our name buffer are at the top of the stack because the stack pointer is also 19FEEO. So if we look over here, this memory is the name buffer. Now it contains gibberish because that's how C works. If you don't initialize a buffer to have some value, or indeed initialize any variable to have some value, it will just tend to contain random gibberish. But if we look through our memory, we will see things that we remember from before. So 19FF24 is the address where the return address is stored. And the return address 401048 is indeed at that address. And that's important because we'll see the return address is stored after the buffer. Now, normally, when, if you have a short name, which I'm going to type right now, that can just get stored in the buffer with no problem. So I put in my name, Peter, and we see here at the buffer's location, 19FEEO, my name, Peter, and followed by a zero character or a null return address down here is fine. It, nothing has gone anywhere near it, so it still has the right value. So when we reach the return instruction, 19FF24, it still has the right value, 401048. And so our program runs normally. As we discussed before, the getS function is very stupid. getS knows that it has to write into the buffer, but getS doesn't know how big the buffer is. And if we type more than 64 characters on our keyboard, getS doesn't care. It will just keep on reading them and keep on putting them in our buffer. So I can show that. If I just write a bunch of A's, lots and lots of A's, way more than 64, I see, look, my, my buffer, okay, the start is A's, but those A's just go on and on and on. And critically, 19FF24, which should be the return address, is now 61616161, not 401048, because it's been filled with A's. So now, when I try to return, it's going to pop this address, 61616161, off the stack and try to execute it. And that is not going to work. So I try it and I get a crash. The crash tells me that it has tried to execute location 61616161. And that's not allowed. There isn't, in fact, any memory at 61616161. So the program crashes. That gives the, the hacker a good indication that he can actually, instead of just crashing the program, he can make it run code of his choosing. We're going to do that. And to do that, I'm going to paste some gibberish.
Now this gibberish is longer than 64 bytes, so it is going to... GetS doesn't care, GetS will read all of it, and GetS will overwrite things that are on the stack as a result. So, my buffer, all of the gibberish I that I pasted, but the gibberish has overwritten the return address. 19FF24 now stores 19FE E8. So this is the the new return address that I've I've overwritten with my gibberish. 19FE E8 just happens to be an address inside the name buffer. So the return address is here, which means that when the function returns, it's going to try to execute the gibberish that I put in the buffer. And it turns out that that's very handy. Because when I try to return into, into the buffer, it turns out that the gibberish I typed in is a sequence of instructions. What do those instructions do? Well, eventually, they are going to call create process, which is a Win32 API, and create process, as the name suggests, starts processes. The process they're going to create is the Windows calculator. Windows calculator is traditionally used as a proof of concept to show that uh, an attacker has managed to successfully take control of a program to make it run a program of his choosing. So when I execute the command, the Windows calculator appears because I, I overflowed the buffer. I made the processor start executing commands from my buffer, and that means I can make the processor do whatever I like. So I made it start calculator. And then the rest of the code in my buffer does a little bit of tidying up. It actually puts the correct return address back onto the stack, so 19FF24 contains 401048, the value it should have, and the program just carries on merrily on its way as if nothing had ever happened. So that is a stack buffer. We showed how overflowing the stack buffer can overwrite return addresses, and we use that fact to run a program of our choosing. And we'll just run it through one last time, this time without the debugger. Paste in my magic gibberish. And there we go. We're running calculator. So that's how you exploit stack buffer overflows.